and welcome to our Pams and Passion Worship. It's so lovely to see you. Thank you for joining us today. We are going to celebrate the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, the day that marks the start of Holy Week. And then we're going tra to transition from Pams to Passion as we hear what happened after Christ entered the city. Join us as we worship together. Triumphal Entry As they approached Jerusalem, near the towns of Bethphage and Bethany, they came to the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of his disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the village there ahead of you. As soon as you get there, you will find a colt tied up that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if someone asks you why you are doing that, say that the Master needs it and will send it back at once. So they went and found a colt out in the street, tied to the door of a house. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders asked them, What are you doing, untying that colt? They answered just as Jesus had told them, and the crowd let them go. They brought the colt to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the animal, and Jesus got on. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches in the field and spread them on the road. The people who were in front and those who followed behind began to shout, Praise God! God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord! God bless the coming kingdom of King David our Father! Praise be to God! Jesus entered Jerusalem, went into the temple and looked around at everything. But since it was already late in the day, he went out to Bethany with the twelve disciples. Lord Jesus, Christ, Messiah, friend, what tasks do you want us to do for you, Jesus? Can we get you a colt to ride, or a cloak to lay before you, or a palm branch to wave in the air? Or have we missed that moment? lost in time now, tasks that were for other people in different times and places. What can we do for you today, Jesus? Can we feed the hungry for you and help those who are homeless? Can we seek justice for those who have no voice of their own? Can we clothe the school kids? Can we be compassionate to those who are hurting and grieving, often on their own? Can we be generous in our giving to build up your church? Can we be your champions in the places where your name is only a swear word? 
Can we be forgiving like you to those who have hurt us? Can we be loving to others who feel unloved and undervalued? Can we be happy to be one of your disciples? Holy Christ, we know the answers to our questions. We know that you would say a resounding yes to all of the above. We don't need to wait for you to ask, for you've already told us. You've showed us the kind of things we should be doing. And so forgive us for standing back and letting others do your work. Forgive us when we have not listened to you. Forgive us when we have closed our ears to your words. Forgive us if we have been lazy, waiting for a personal invitation to serve. Forgive us for pretending that we did not know what to do. Forgive us, O Lord, in your mercy. Awaken us to life today so that we may live out the gospel and declare to all the world that we are journeying with you. Amen. When they arrived in Jerusalem, Jesus went to the temple and began to drive out all those who were buying and selling. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the stools of those who sold pigeons, and he would not let anyone carry anything through the temple courtyards. He then taught the people. It is written in scriptures that God said, my temple will be called a house of prayer for the people of all nations, but you have turned it into a hideout for thieves. The chief priests and the teachers of law heard of this, so they began looking for some way to kill Jesus. They were afraid of him because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When evening came, Jesus and his disciples left the city. Thank you.
Jesus is anointed at Bethany. Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon, a man who had suffered from a dreaded skin disease. While Jesus was eating, a woman came in with an alabaster jar full of a very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on Jesus' head. Some of the people became angry and said to one another, what was the use of wasting the perfume? It could have been sold for more than 300 silver coins and the money given to the poor. And they criticised her harshly. But Jesus said, leave her alone. Why are you bothering her? She has done a fine and beautiful thing for me. You will always have poor people with you and at any time you want to, you can help them. But you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured the perfume on my body to prepare it ahead of time for burial. Now I assure you that wherever the gospel is preached all over the world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples, went off to the chief priests in order to betray Jesus to them. I will offer up my life in spirit and truth Pouring out the oil of love As my worship to you In surrender I must give My every part Lord receive the sacrifice Of a broken heart Jesus what can I give what can I bring to so faithful a friend, to so loving a King? Savior, what can be said, what can be sung as a praise of your name for the things you have done? Oh, my words could not tell, not even in of the debt of love that is owed by this thankful heart. Now, on the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lambs were being slaughtered, his disciples said to him, where would you like us to go and prepare for your Passover supper? So he sent out two of his disciples with these instructions. Go into the city and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. And when he enters a house, give this message to the householder. The master says, where is the room reserved for me to eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs set out in readiness. Make the preparations for us there. Then the disciples went off, and when they came into the city, they found everything just as he had told them. So they prepared for Passover. In the evening, he came to the house with the twelve. As they sat at supper, Jesus said, I tell you is this, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. At this they were dismayed, and one by one they said to him, not I, surely. It is one of the twelve, he said, who is dipping into the same bowl with me. The Son of Man is going the way appointed for him in the Scriptures. But alas, for that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed, it would be better for that man if he had never been born. During supper, he took bread, and having said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to them with the words, Take this. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and having offered thanks to God, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said, This is my blood of the covenant, shed for many. I tell you this, never again shall I drink from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. <laughs>
They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough! The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Jesus was still speaking when Judas, one of the twelve disciples, arrived. With him was a crowd, armed with swords and clubs, and sent by the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. The traitor had given the crowd a signal. The man I kiss is the one you want. Arrest him and take him away under guard. As soon as Judas arrived, he went up to Jesus and said, Teacher, and kissed him. So they arrested Jesus and held him tight. But one of those standing there drew his sword and struck at the high priest's sleeve, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus spoke up and said to them, do you have to come with swords and clubs to capture me, as though I were an outlaw? Day after day, I was with you teaching in the temple and you did not arrest me, but the scriptures must come true. Then all the disciples left him and ran away.
Jesus is tried by the temple and the Roman authorities. Then Jesus was taken to the high priest's house where all the chief priests, the elders and the teachers of the law were gathering. Peter followed at a distance and went into the courtyard of the high priest's house. There he sat down with the guards, keeping himself warm by the fire. The chief priests and the whole council tried to find some evidence against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they couldn't find any. Many witnesses told lies against Jesus, but the stories didn't agree. Early in the morning, the chief priests met hurriedly with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole council, and made their plans. They put Jesus in chains, led him away, and handed, handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, So you say. The chief priests were accusing Jesus of many things, so Pilate questioned him again. Aren't you going to answer? Listen to all their accusations. Again, Jesus refused to say a word, and Pilate was amazed. At every Passover festival, Pilate was in the habit of setting free any one prisoner the people asked for. At that time, a man named Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder in the riot. When the crowd gathered and began to ask Pilate for the usual favour, he asked them, Do you want me to set free for you the king of the Jews? He knew very well that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him because they were jealous. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to ask and said that Pilate set Barabbas free for them. Pilate spoke again to the crowd. What then do you want me to do with the one you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. But what crime has he committed? Pilate asked. They shouted back all the louder, crucify him. Pilate wanted to please the crowd, so he set Barabbas free for them. Then he had Jesus whipped and handed him over to be crucified. us as we pray for others, for those whom every day is a season of Lent, of self-doubt, of suffering, of fear or of sorrow, for those whom every day requires courage and sacrifice, living under the shadow of death. We remember those who live with pain or loneliness. We hold them before you and ask that you reach out with your powerful hand to heal, protect and restore. United with all who cry to you, united with one another, united with all the company of heaven, hear us as we say together the prayer your Son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Then they took him out to crucify him. A man called Simon from Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they pressed him into service to carry his cross. They brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. He was offered drugged wine, but he would not take it. Then they fastened him to the cross. They divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should have. The hour of the crucifixion was nine in the morning, and the inscription giving the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. Two bandits were crucified with him one on his right and the other on his left. The passers-by hurled abuse at him. Aha, they cried, wagging their heads. You would pull the temple down, would you? And build it in three days. Come down from the cross and save yourself. So too the chief priests and the doctors of the law jested with one another. He saved others, they said, but he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, Come down now from the cross. If we see that, we shall believe. Even those who were crucified with him taunted him. At noon, the whole country was covered with darkness, which lasted for three hours. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, Eloi, Eloi, Lema, Sabah, Tami, which means, My God, my God, why did you abandon me? Some of the people there heard him and said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. One of them ran up with a sponge, soaked it in cheap wine, and put it on the end of a stick. Then he held it up to Jesus' lips and said, Wait, let's see if Elijah is coming to bring him down from the cross. With a loud cry, Jesus died. The curtain hanging in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The army officer who was standing there in front of the cross saw how Jesus died. This man was really the Son of God, he said. Some women were there, looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, 
Mary the mother of the younger James, and of Joseph and Salome. They had followed Jesus while he was in Galilee, and had helped him. Many other women who had come to Jerusalem with him were also there. It was, it was towards evening when Joseph of Arimathea arrived. He was a, a respected member of the council who was waiting for the coming of the kingdom of God. It was preparation day, that is the day before the Sabbath. So Joseph went boldly into the presence of Pilate and asked him for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that Jesus was already dead. He called the army officer and asked him if Jesus had been dead a long time. After hearing the officer's report, Pilate told Joseph he could have the body. Joseph bought a linen sheet, took the body down, wrapped it in the sheet and placed it in a tomb which had been dug out of solid rock. Then he rolled a large stone across the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph were watching and saw where the body of Jesus was placed. Thank you for joining us for worship today. It's been really good to spend time with you as we journeyed with Jesus from that triumphal entry with palms and cloaks laid on the floor to death on a cross, betrayed by those who were jealous, put to death in the early hours of the morning before anyone could complain. Holy Week is a time of reflecting and a time of remembering. Please join us every day in Holy Week at three o'clock for a short reading and a prayer together as we journey each day at a time in our passion story. Three o'clock on Zoom every day. And additionally, on Thursday, on Monday, Thursday, the 1st of April, there's an opportunity to gather together for Holy Communion at 7 p.m. A short service as we share together, remembering that Last Supper, remembering our Christ who calls us to serve and we share together in his name. We look forward to seeing you. It's lovely that you could join us. We hope to see you online or in the building next Sunday. But please remember, if you are hoping to come to the building, that you book in in advance. The phone number is on your newsletter if you're a St Margaret's member. And it's at the end of this video as well. And I'll put it on the Facebook page. We look forward to celebrating Easter with you in due course. But for today, may God go with you wherever you may journey. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and with those whom you love. For this Holy Week and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>